So hello guys and welcome back to another video. This one is a bit of a long one. Um, obviously it's the final part of the rebuild for the KA. Um, there's gonna be lots of different time lapses in there. So I will pin it in the description box below each one. So if you wanna skip ahead to maybe the car being primed or the car being painted, then you can do so. But apart from that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and smash that like button. Thank you all for watching. So to kick off the repair, we are gonna start by grinding back on this damaged seal. Uh, that's going to hit with the grinder, obviously it just saves sand in it, it's a lot more quicker process and it goes through it back to, and it gets through to the metal sorry, in about 10 seconds. And then I have an attempt at welding the little packers plate to the car, um, the welding that I was doing um, definitely needs a bit of work, <laughs> definitely need a bit of practice on it but obviously if I don't practice then I'm never going to know and then dad gets on to welding it, um, stupidly he's not wearing a mask, he's just covering his eyes which don't ever ever do that, that's really stupid of him, but nonetheless uh, the plate is now welded and we can now attach the clamp to it and then put the strap to it ready to be pulled. And then obviously it's going to be the start pulled now. Um, basically it's what it's doing is that we've just got to pull it sort of back into its original position, then I'll get his hands and knees and start to hit with a panel beating hammer and hopefully it should start to take the original shape. Now obviously it's quite a hard process and it's something that he's managed to master with time. Um, and what we're actually pulling off is a forklift. So rather than it going on the jig, um, we have uh, a uh, forklift and the forks of the forklift, sorry. Um, on the end of it is a block of wood and that's uh, pushed up against the wheel. So obviously it's got a good, nice something to pull off of. Um, and that creates a nice little sort of jigging system for the cars to be repaired. Now once the seal is sort of in a position that we want it, um, Dad gets onto the packers plate with a grinder and he obviously cuts the welds off and obviously not going too far, he doesn't want to go into the panel obviously then he's got to weld it all back up and then he hits it again with the grinder just to get rid of any excess metal that the welder has left behind and then you can see there that he's just scuffing the edge of the other packers plate and um, the smaller one sorry just to make sure that the welds are a little bit more cleaner now it did need a little bit of a pull just where that's welded that plate that's obviously why it's the smaller one and not the larger one so obviously he's tightened it up and now we begin the process again by attaching it to the puller and now I'm just going to start cranking it and putting a good bit of pressure on it, pulling the seal back into its original place again. Now this metal is really thin so it does, so it does move very very easily and then dad did go to pull it with his arm and then that was just too much and it ended up pulling the plate off and now as you can see dad actually put a little tiny hole in the metal so you have to grind it back and then so weld it weld it up obviously you cannot leave it like that because if you left it like that and then filled over it it would eventually cause rust so you can see dad just hitting it again with the panel beating hammer just really trying to take its shape And now you can see that Dad has jacked the car in the air, giving me a little bit more space to work with. Now I'm using the Rottenberg and I am welding little pins to the side of the sill. And then it's what I'm doing is that I'm putting the slide hammer, attaching it to the pin and then just pulling it back. And it's what that does is that it just pulls bit by bit each of the metal. Um, and when you're welding the Rottenberg on it, you want as much clean metal as you can because otherwise it is quite hard for it to stick to the panel, for it to weld to the panel, sorry. So I'm just sliding it back, Dad's just watching me. And then you can see I just poke my head around the corner just to see how far we are out. Dad's using that little long piece of metal as sort of a guide. Um, so he knows obviously how flat the panel is. And I'm just going to keep on working it here and Dad's going to just talk me through what I need to do to get that metal back to whereabouts it belongs. Now I have a pair of long nose plies and now I'm just sort of wiggling around the pins and seeing whether any loose ones will sort of come off. Um, 
from there you have to be aware that if you do wiggle the pins too much when they're not ready to come off then it will also cause a hole in the panel so if they're not ready to come off or they're quite welded on then simply you just snip them sort of as close as you can to the end of the pin and then you can just grind it back which is a lot more easier than having to weld the holes back up Now obviously this whole process is all about practice, um, obviously dad's been doing it now for over 40 years so it's just sort of second nature to him now, he knows exactly where the metal needs to be, how we can manipulate it, but obviously I'm just starting out so I need as much guidance, as much help from dad as I can. And you can see there I'm a now cutting it back with the grinder and I have got a grinding mask now. I've got a grinding mask and it also doubles up as a welding mask. Thanks for all your suggestions in that last video. I have gone, gone the snap-on van and I have bought myself a mask just for a bit more safety. Now I'm sort of just working along now, cleaning up that metal, um, getting rid of all of the neat uh, pins sorry, that have been on it. Now you have to be really careful because where that's the edges, if I work that too much with that grinder then I will put a hole through it and dad will kick me. <laughs> so I've got to be really careful and keep just being patient with it. So dad is now knocking up some filler and spreading it onto the sill. He has knocked it back as much as he can. So now the uh, filler needs to come into hand just to get over any little dents that is uh, too small for him to get out. But I'm going to begin taking off that back bumper. Now I'm taking off the back bumper so dad has a bit more access and is a bit more easier, easier sorry, for him to repair that rear quarter and not have to worry about the sander or you know any tools that he's using digging into that bumper. So it's just for safety. But he's going to crack on putting that heat lamp on the sill just to make the filler go hard. And I'm going to begin sanding down the filler on the door. Now, obviously, I'm not used to filler work. I am going to need a lot of practice of it, but. Again, with Dad's help, I'm sure I will be 100% one day. And he's going to begin repairing that rear quarter. And now he has the Dremel on the little dents on the rear quarter. And I'm going to begin pulling it out with the pins again from the Rottenberg. So I am now removing the pins off of the rear quarter. As you can see here, I get stuck with one. So I begin working it and I put a hole in that rear quarter. Dad has a little moan at me and says I never listened to him, which... He's not wrong, he did tell me that I was going to do that if I carried on and I stupidly carried on but I have then welded another pin and it covers the hole on the weld and Dad's again going to work it back with the grinder. Now he's then just working it with the panel beating hammer and sort of just trying to make it take take shape. Now I'm pointing there because well my eyes are a bit more better than his, than his is <laughs> so I can uh, sort of guide him whereabouts it needs to come if it needs to come a bit more out if you know it needs to come a bit more to the right and this time it needs to come a bit more to the right so he's got the slide hammer on it and he's just working it along
again we're just making sure that the panel gaps line up and that door sits nice and straight on that rear quarter which obviously it doesn't so he's gonna have to keep working it and we've got a block of wood block of wood sorry in the door just holding it open for him So we're heading towards the end of the day now. Um, I was editing really late last night. So dad come in this morning, uh, got this door all in filler. Um, I rubbed it down and it's come up all right to be fair. Um, obviously you'd have seen that we pulled all of that, that seal out yesterday and dad filled it and sanded it back today. The wing is now, well, the wings are in a lot more better position than when I left it really. Um, dad got rid of all the paint that was on that black bracket. It's actually come up all right. So dad managed to get in here today and Basically, so if, I don't know if you guys can see, so there's one skin there, then two, then another skin there. And Dad managed just to open the skin up because there was actually it was a tiny little bit of glue that holds them together. But obviously, where it had the impact, it already opened it up. So Dad managed to get a bar in there and bar all that out. That all needs going to be doing tomorrow. But that little there, little dent in there has been pulled out. Dents in there and in there have both been pulled out as well. See there as well. All of that seal has all been filled all ready for primer. So dad has come in in the morning and prepped it all ready for primer. Now he just keeps going over it with the high build primer, which means that he can knock it back. Now he should really be wearing a mask. Um, please, again, when you're painting, you always need to be wearing masks. Um, he just completely forgot this time. And obviously it does help as well that the extraction system does take it right away, but it's still no excuse. You should always wear a mask. So it's on his hands and knees now, just trying to build up the primer on that sill. Now if you have a look whereabouts that masking tape is and whereabouts it's marked off, you do not want to keep going over that with the primer because eventually you will put a big enough lip on it and it will be very hard to sand it back when you are prepping it for the paint. And trust me, that is a mistake I've made plenty of times. And now he just puts the heat lamp on it just try and make it go off and to be fair the primer always does go off right um, obviously it's very hard to get a run in it so you can really just keep layering it on there now it's going over the door now this door was quite rough when we got it it had a dent in the bottom of it and it had a dent right in the middle of it hence why dad has put filler in it now he's just building it up again with the primer and I'm pretty sure he ends up priming the whole of this door So unfortunately I didn't manage to get any videos of dad rubbing the primer down but you can see him here very proud of himself after he rubbed it all down and now it's ready for the paint. So just before me and dad get into painting the car I just want to say that this is the mask that I normally use. Now this mask for painting solvent isn't really the best mask and it shouldn't be used. So that's why I want to say a massive thank you to AR Davies for supplying me this paint mask. Now this mask is a lot more better and it offers a lot more protection. So this mask has little disposable filters in it and it basically is just a lot more better breathing apparatus, especially for the fumes that we're always breathing in. So I'm going to leave AR Davis's link in the description and their phone number as well. So if you want any paint supplies, any refinishing supplies, go to them because they are definitely the best in Hertfordshire.
Now we come on to painting the front of the door um, and obviously when you come to the big body shops they've got lovely stands that they can hang all their panels off but obviously we haven't got that luxury at the moment. Um, well to be fair I think it is just because dad's a bit old school and he just likes to uh, do it his way but we hang the door off of two chains from the ceiling and it works perfect so you know I suppose there is method to his madness uh, more I go and spend a load of money on paint stands when you can use two chains and two meat hooks. <laughs> So dad is now mixing up some lacquer. He puts in about 300 ml of lacquer and then he puts 50% hardener and then around 10% thinners. So dad now begins lacquering the seal. Um, and I am definitely not trusted lacquering at this point. Um, lacquer is, uh, well, it's a bit more harder to put on than base coat. Um, if you get a run in it, then that sort of, well, it really does screw up the, uh, the day. <laughs> So you've got to re sort of restart all over again and obviously we're quite far already into this project so we cannot afford for mistakes so I'm going to video and I'm going to watch Dad do it. Baby, you give me eyes and fire. 
gentle and wind and rain Yes, I'm gonna butterfly Baby, you give me a good night You whip up my appetite So the KA is now all painted, the door's painted, the wing's painted, and the rear quarter and the sill is now painted. How do you think it come out? It looks alright. It looks alright. It's blue. <laughs> <laughs> blue. I, think, I think it's come out alright. Um, until we, well actually, let's see where we look now. Have a little look now, can't we? Not the colour much it looks like. Can't really tell at the moment. Quite blind, man, it'd be good to see it. You'll have to, uh, we'll have to take it out on the side and see what the colour matches like, but I'm pretty sure it's alright. Looks alright for me. We had a bit of a problem on this arch here. Um, basically, it started to run just about here, um, but you managed to flush it out, didn't you? Flush it out? Or, like, like flush it out of the bushes, or you mean I, make, you mean, you, I managed to flow it out? Flow it out. And it's uh, ended up dripping onto the masking tape, so that's alright, that looks fine now. But yeah, it's come up alright. We'll get it. Tomorrow we'll get it all fitted up and then we'll get outside and see what the paint match is like. So the car is now outside. Uh, luckily for us it's a nice hot day today so we've took it outside just to bake that paint off and as always uh, from AR Davies the paint match is perfect. Uh, so uh, just going around the car now um, and bear in mind guys especially the conditions that we're spraying in you know we're not spraying in an oven um, we're spraying in basically a room with extraction and when you look at that finish there that is straight out the gun so you know there's ba barely hardly any dust in that um, it will need minimal buffing and uh, so especially for the, the conditions that we're in that's a really good finish so I'm hoping this is the last day on the Ford K build. Man United have just lost to bloody Man City in the FA Cup final, so just put a bit of a down on the day, but we're gonna get it loaded off the truck now, get it fitted up, and hopefully it'll be done by today. If not, it'll be tomorrow, but it's going in for a MOT next week because it's only got about two weeks left on it. So we're gonna put a fresh MOT on it for the next person who has it. So I am now taking the door card off, ready to swap over, and I'm taking the sound deadening foam out of the door, ready to put onto the new door. I've just taken the speaker off there, just so the foam around the door sits absolutely perfect. That's gonna put some masking tape on it as well. So after giving the car a wash, we are now at the end of the Ford KA rebuild. Thank you all for watching. If you are interested in this car, then please give me a message on my Instagram. The link in the description below will take you straight to it. Pop me a DM on there and we can arrange a viewing. But apart from that, thank you all, all for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, and I'll see you all in the next one.